Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we're going to be taking a look at the King James Bible. Now, if you're following along on the Dark Outpost with us on Tuesdays, you know that last week this was a request made by David Zublick. The reason why he made this request to look at the King James Bible and its origins is because a lot of fundamentalist organizations here here, especially in the United States, tend to only allow their parishioners to read the King James Version of the Bible. Now, as many of you know, again, I am on the Dark Outpost on Tuesdays. My segment is a two-hour segment. The first hour, we have been looking through the missing books of the Bible. Right now, we're looking at the Yoga Sutras, but we will be going back to the missing books of the Bible once we finish the Yoga Sutras. But the second hour, again, we are deep diving into these fundamentalist groups that are notorious for mistreating people, especially women and children. This was inspired by the recent arrest and conviction of Josh Duggar from the show 19 Kids and Counting for his possession of CP. On the second hour of the Dark Outpost, we have already covered uh, institutions like the IBLP, which is the Institution of Basic Like Principles, which is one of the organizations that the Duggars lived by or were a part of that's um, run by a man named Bill Gothard who's had his own issues with ABUSC in, involving women. We've also looked at Steve Anderson who is the leader of the new Fundamentalist Baptist Church and of course now we are looking at Michael and Debbie Pearl who wrote that horrific book called To Train of a Child which we are reading through on David Zublick's platform. As I say almost every week, there's no way I could actually read through that book on YouTube because it is just so, so toxic. And I definitely know it will break the algorithms for words you can't say here on YouTube. But even if you go to Michael and Debbie Pearl's website, you will see again that the only version of the Bible they allow their parishioners to read from is the King James Version. Again, this is super, super, super common, especially when it comes to high controlled fundamentalist groups. Now the story that they will tell you behind the King James Bible is one of two things. They believe, they truly believe that King James was inspired by God to translate the Bible into English. And if that is a theory that you still believe, then that shows me that you have not taken the time just to do a little bit of research because even just a little bit of research into the King James translation of the Bible will completely debunk that theory. There were already Bibles translated into English when the King James Bible was issued and we're going to get into that during this episode. It is also believed by many of these groups that the reason why they stick to the King James Bible because again it was like the first Bible translated to English so therefore it's the closest to the original Greek, Hebrew, and Aramaic text. Again, this is not true. And again, I have my reasons for not trusting this translation because we do have evidence and proof that King James himself was a Freemason. He also liked young people, if you know what I'm saying, especially boys. And he was kind of a sadist, which we're going to get into as well. We know that the royal families are not actually serving the same God that you and I serve, so that also is very concerning. But of course, with everything, I do ask that you also do your own research. Everything that we're going to discuss in this episode is easily, easily found with a quick Google search. And so researching and finding the facts about King James and the King James Bible is not difficult. Most people with just a little bit of computer knowledge should be able to find this information for themselves as well. Now for starters, I want to start with the King James Version of the Bible, again, being the Bible that is primarily used by these independent, fundamentalist, Protestant Christian groups. This is because historically, the original Protestants of the Reformation would have not gone near the King James Version of the Bible. In fact, most of the original Protestants in the Reformation in Europe knew exactly who King James was, and they understood that his translation of the Bible was nothing but propaganda. 
If we look at the rise of Protestantism throughout Europe, as it slowly started to depart from its roots in Catholicism, we also see the rise of capitalism and democracy. The Protestant Reformation brought with it a new level of literacy among the European people. This came at a time when the people were then able to read the Bible, whether it be in Latin or eventually an English translation or French translation or German translation, and see that they had been duped by the Catholic Church. For starters, they had been duped by the Catholic Church by believing that the Pope was somehow superior to all humans, that the Pope was somehow a mouthpiece for God, where the teachings of Christ simply say that is not true. We all have that direct relationship to God. This also comes by way of what was known as divine right, something that King James himself very much believed in. The monarchies all over Europe believed that through their bloodline, they were divinely placed on earth as gods themselves to tell the people what to do and to control their religion. This was a huge issue with King Henry VIII, long before King James was on the throne. Everybody knows King Henry VIII and his six wives. Well, King Henry VIII pulled away from the Catholic Church, pulled England out of the Roman Catholic Church because he wanted to marry Anne Boylan. And because he was the king of England and therefore was under the impression that he was divinely superior than the people and again was chosen by God through his bloodline to direct the people, then that meant he himself should be the head of his own church. Even to this day, Queen Elizabeth II is the head of the church in England. After King Henry VIII passed away, and after his son passed away, and after their cousin Jane Grey was beheaded, his first daughter, Queen Mary I, took the throne of England, and she herself was a staunch Catholic. So once again, she started to swing the English people back into favor with the Roman Catholic Church. She got the nickname Bloody Mary because she was hell-bent on getting rid of all the Protestants in England. She did this by burning them at the stake. Now at this point, a lot of the Protestants in England made their way over to Geneva, Switzerland. Geneva was one of the first places that granted the newfound Protestant faith freedom of press and freedom of religion. This was a safe haven for people seeking religious asylum before they ever started loading on boats to go over to the New World here in America. While in Geneva, a new Bible was translated. This was the Geneva Bible. This first Bible was released in 1560 and had what was called marginal notes. This Bible was put together by the people of the Reformation, and the marginal notes themselves were added by leaders of the Reformation like John Knox, and John Calvin. In fact, one of the marginal notes read, when tyrants cannot prevail by craft, they burst forth into open rage. This was a marginal note written in Exodus 1.22. And because of King James' staunch belief in the divine right of the bloodline of kings, he hated these marginal notes and he despised the Geneva Bible. Even though the Geneva Bible was published six years before James' birth, he would make it his mission to censor the Geneva Bible by releasing his own translation in 1611. I also want to note that it was the Geneva Bible that was brought to the New World by the Protestants who sailed on the Mayflower. And so it seems really interesting that the same Protestants here in America that find themselves in these very high controlled fundamentalist groups are no longer using the Geneva Bible, the Bible of their predecessors, but instead are using the Bible of their enemy, King James I. I also want to mention that before the Geneva Bible was published in 1560, another man by the name of William Tyndale also translated the Bible into English. Because he did this, he was executed on October 6th of 1536. 
So again, to all the people watching that are still under the delusion that King James was the first person to be divinely inspired to translate the Bible into English, that is dead wrong. He was not the first person to translate the Bible into English. And in fact, his translating the Bible into English was a way to censor the original translations because after all, this bunch, this group of people, they don't want us to ever know the truth. King James was born the son of Mary Queen of Scots. He was the great, great grandson of Henry VII, who was the first Tudor King of England. His birth came on the 19th of June, 1566, in Edinburgh, Scotland. He took the throne at the age of 13 months because his mother was forced to advocate. Now, his mother, Mary, Queen of Scots, is also a very, very interesting character in our history. A few months back, I did a deep dive into Catherine de Medici, who was the Queen of France for the House of Valois. Catherine de Medici was also a known Satanist. I will link the video we did on Catherine de Medici in the description box below. Mary, Queen of Scots, was raised in the court of the House of Valois as she was engaged to Catherine de Medici's first son, who ended up passing away not very long after their marriage. At that point, Mary did return to Scotland to be the rightful Queen of Scotland. Now again, there is a very romanticized view of Mary, Queen of Scots, but in my deep research, I have found that this woman was not the hero we want to make her out to be. She herself was also, in my opinion, from what I've seen, very, very nefarious. She had lots of affairs, which doesn't make her super nefarious, but does question the father of who James really was. He is a steward because it is believed that her husband at the time of his birth was in fact the father, but because of all of Mary's deals with a bunch of the men at court, we can't totally be sure who his actual father was. Mary had to advocate the throne to James because Mary herself was a staunch Catholic. There was a lot of issues within the whole of the British Isles at this time between the Catholics and the Protestants. Many people who supported Mary believed that she should have actually been sitting on the throne of England at this time. Her cousin, though, was the monarch on the throne of England. This, of course, was Queen Elizabeth I, who subsequently was also King James I, godmother. Mary ended up being captured in England and spent most of her life under captivity under the watchful eye of Queen Elizabeth I's court. Because of all the controversy of Queen Elizabeth I's legitimacy since her mother was Anne Boleyn, there was constantly these plots to overthrow her and put Mary Queen of Scots on the throne. Because of this, Mary, Queen of Scots herself, was executed by beheading on the 8th of February of 1587. Have it though, as fate would have it though, when Queen Elizabeth I passed away, she had no heirs. And so the next person in line for the throne of England was in fact King James. Now at this point, King James was King James VI of Scotland. But when he also inherited the throne of England, he became King James I of England. At this point, we see both Scotland and England being joined together under the same monarchy. But a couple of years before King James took the throne of England, he was sworn in in Scotland as a Freemason. In fact, the Contract of Mutual Agreement of 1658 discusses this, and we can also see on the Freemasonry website that James was entered as a Freemason on the 15th of April, 1601. In fact, the website quotes that on the west wall of the Lodge Hall, used by the Lodge Scone in Perth No. 3 in Perth, Scotland, can be found a mural depicting James kneeling at their altar at his initiation. For those that have been on this journey of this Great Awakening for quite a while now, you know that Freemasonry, the higher and higher and higher you get, becomes a satanic religion. We also know that when King James I of England commissioned his translation of the Bible, he had Sir Francis Bacon edit the Bible, edit his version of the Bible. 
We've spoken about Sir Francis Bacon on this channel before because he is also assumed to possibly be William Shakespeare. Sir Francis Bacon is also oddly tied to the conception of the Georgia Guidestones, which I have spoken about a lot on this channel, seeing that I live very close to the Georgia Guidestones and have been out there myself. We also know that the Freemasons in general did a lot of work with King James to produce his Bible. In fact, Freemason lodges all over the world still continue to use the 1611 translation of the King James Bible. We also know that King James had the propensity to quite enjoy hunting animals. Now, According to the sources that I found, it was just animals they spoke about, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were other species in these hunting games he used to play, if you know what I mean. In fact, it is written in many journals that when King James would go hunting, he would take an animal and bring it to the point of not actually passing away, but very close to that point, where he would then torture the animal and proceed to swim and play in its blood. We also know that King James was quite a sadist who really did not like women. Yes, we hear the whole love story between him and his wife and that he thought witches were after his wife and that's why her boat couldn't make it over to the British Isles. All of that is just malarkey. Of course he had a wife and of course he had heirs because he was the king and you have to carry on the bloodline, but we know that he really did not like women. In fact, it is quoted in the Encyclopedia Americana that he disdained women and fawned unconsciously to his favorite men. Now, of course, most of his favorite men were young boys. Now, King James, again, is also famous for starting his witch trials all over the British Isles. In fact, he wrote books about demons and witches and all that kind of stuff. In fact, he was obsessed with the hunting of these said witches. Now we know, especially if you've been on this channel, that um, the word sorcery in the Bible is actually pharmakia. And most of these women that were processed at the hand of King James I were merely just working with herbs, which is the direct opposite of pharmakia, which again was sorcery from the Bible. Before the passing of Queen Elizabeth I of England, when James was simply just James VI of Scotland in 1591, he himself supervised all of the torture of these women who were selected as witches. In fact, there was even a case involving a woman named Barbara Naper, who was accused of being a witch, and she was actually found innocent by a jury of her peers. But that wasn't good enough for King James. In fact, he called Barbara Napers back in order to find her guilty himself and supervise her execution. Of course, King James would go on to bring these antics into England when he took over the English throne. His King James Bible became the government-issued Bible all over the British Isles. And by 1644, the Geneva Bible was officially out of print, having been silenced and censored by the Satanists that have ruled our planet for a very, very long time. And one last thing before we end this episode. If you happen to find an older copy of the King James Bible, you might notice that there is a very interesting illustration. It's the illustration of the Baphomet head. The Baphomet head that is worshipped by Satanist. All right, thank you so much, guys, for sitting through this episode. Next week, we will be returning back to the Yoga Sutras. I hope that you found this information interesting, and I hope that you do continue to do your own research on where you're getting your biblical information from. After all, it's said that the pen is mightier than the sword. Please leave me your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.